A Somewhat Peculiar Frog. Episode 1, Discovery. Hello! This is Matthew Ingarai, surveying intern with the State Park Service of Pennsylvania. Hello, future self, and maybe Dr. Revelmeyer, if you listen to these. It is Wednesday, August 14th, 1148 a.m., and I am here at the Lordview Estate. I have decided to name this section Beaver Town because there are beavers! I've noticed two adults. They appear healthy and lively, and I suspect there are a few kits here somewhere. Their lodge is on the far north side of the lake. Would not recommend a trail anywhere within eyesight of the beaver lodge for protection of habitat. There are walnut trees here! Oh, uh, M. Ingarai, here at Sector NE3 of the Lordview Estate. There is a grove of black walnut trees nestled up a bit away from the lake. I need to come back in November to collect. The walnuts, that is. Not the trees. For, um, research. Not because they are a very healthy and tasty snack, which goes very well crunched up in oatmeal. M. Ingarai, Sector E2 of the Lordview Estate. I have stumbled across a small pile of coyote droppings. Impossible to tell what the big fella has been eating from these, but worth noting, coyotes are in the area. Wow. Wow. This is breathtaking. M. Ingarai, Sector C of the Lordview Estate, at the old manor, standing at the edge of the lake. The view is incredible. The sun is setting, and it's casting this purple-red glow over the surface of the water. It's just incredible. There's a sense of stillness here. Aw, there's a frog just absolutely lounging on a little rock about two feet off the edge of the lake. I think he's sleeping. Geez, that's a big freaking frog. Gotta be about the size of a baseball. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure what species he is. Blue streaks on his back, and his skin isn't green. It's a yellowish, grayish, sort of stony color. I really don't know what species he is. You know what? <clears throat> I have been authorized by the PA State Park Service to take samples of wildlife back to the field station. So, I'm gonna pop on these gloves and grab them. Got you, you little bugger. Oh, it's okay, little fella. I'm not gonna hurt you. What are you? I've never seen a frog like you. You are weird looking, do you know that? What the heck are you? You have a lovely voice. You're coming with me. I only have one specimen carrying case. Let's hope I don't also find an endangered green newt. Good lord, it gets dark out here fast. I'd better get back before I get lost. Matt Ingarai, back at the field station at Lordview Estate. Man, I am stumped right now. I can't figure out what the heck this frog is. First off, it is definitely a frog, not a toad, because of the long jumping legs and smooth slimy skin. The coloring is certainly strange. There are no documented frogs in Pennsylvania with yellow-gray skin and blue streaks, but that could be just some sort of skin deformity, which isn't unheard of. I am just puzzled by his body. The front feet only have three toes, the back feet have six. The feet don't have sticky toe pads or climbing claws, so I don't think you're a tree frog. Your eyes aren't gold, so you're not a bullfrog. You don't have the face markings of a woodland frog, and your eardrums aren't the right shape to be a green frog. That's another thing. I can't tell if it's a male or female. The bright colors and vocal sac make me think male, but there's no nuptial growth on the arms. And the large size makes me think female, but... Jeez, I'm, I'm really... I'm stumped here. I don't know the species, I don't know the gender. I will consult Google. Okay, so I'm not sure how relevant this is, but I found this really fascinating article about toads. There are a variety of toads in the world who use hallucinogenic drugs as a defense mechanism, including the Sonoran Desert Toad and the Buffo Alvarius Toad. Ancient cultures across Northern America harvested the poison from the toads and refined it into a salve which could be smoked or ingested, using the drug for spiritual and medicinal rituals. It is still used across the United States and is currently the subject of 14 pharmaceutical research trials. 
Whoa. I wonder how that first got discovered hundreds of thousands of years ago. Some brave soul must have seen a colorful toad they'd never seen before and thought, I'm going to lick you and see what happens. And here I sit, a frog in front of me I have never seen before. How would the course of humanity have been altered had that person never taken that lick those thousands of years ago? Am I morally obligated to lick this frog? Yeah, probably not. I should probably just figure out what exactly you are. Okay, this is actually really, really promising. I found a photograph of a newspaper clipping from 1983 about a researcher in Pennsylvania, about 50 miles north of here, who found a turtle with strange colors and mutations. It's from a Dr. Crown. I found a turtle, whom I have named Gerald, on a subsection of the Appalachian Trail in Bushkill, Pennsylvania. He was stuck on his back, motionless, leading me to assume he'd been in this position for some considerable time. As I approached Gerald, I noticed his skin was black-red, a shiny obsidian color with undertones of a maroon. I was puzzled. What was this turtle? I brought him to the Bushkill Wildlife and Game Rehabilitation Facility to try to get him identified, and none of the staff there were able to help. The turtle's legs, shell, and snout were measured, and the information only further confounded us. He was not a painted turtle, not a snapping turtle, nor a mud turtle. It seemed that whatever box we tried to put this turtle in, he did not fit. We considered turtles not native to Pennsylvania. The red-headed Amazon River turtle, the red-crowned roof turtle, the Indian flapshell turtle, nothing was a match. The turtle was clearly exhausted and dehydrated. Once he was stable, I took him back with me too, and then it's illegible in the scan, for a few days to nurse him back to health. On my second day with Gerald, he spoke to me. Wait. What? Gerald requested that I bring him worms for him to eat. What? Okay, this guy is nuts. Never mind. I really can't find anything on this frog. I think it might be a new species. I think it actually might be a new species. Okay, deep breaths. Oh my god, this, this is huge. This is like end up on a morning talk show level of huge. We're not talking about some new ant in a corner of the Amazon rainforest or something. We're talking about a brand spanking new species of frog right here in Pennsylvania. This is going to change everything. This is going to get me a scholarship for grad school. Maybe even a full ride. Okay, just breathe. In and out. In and out. Okay, let's feed the frog. What do you like, my wonderful, special frog? Worms? Crickets? Moths? Let's try some crickets. There you go, little bud. All yours. Okay. Duly noted, you like crickets. How about a couple more? There you go, little fella. I hope you're feeling nice and full. Okay. Tomorrow morning, I call Dr. Revelmeyer. I tell him about the frog. He comes, takes a look, if it really is a new species, we call the National Science Foundation. They come, confirm the findings, I get published. The Herpetological Conservation and Biology Journal, Save the Frogs magazine, posts about it on blogs. I could probably get the director of the National Science Foundation to write me a letter of recommendation for grad school, or at least the director of the Pennsylvania branch. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Don't count your frogs before they've been confirmed to be a new species. I'm going to have a Coke the other half of my sandwich, and I'm going to relax and try not to lose my mind thinking about it. I can put on Futurama and just relax. That's a good sandwich. Food smelling good. I get some. What the fuck? This episode was written, created, and produced by Anna Stein and James Brandis. It starred James Brandis as Matthew Ingerai and Anna Stein as The Frog. Music and sound effect credits, as well as social media and transcript links, can be found in the show notes. Stick around after the credits for a trailer for another great audio drama. Fun fact about frogs. Some species of frog can freeze over half their body in the winter and thaw unharmed come spring. Hey, 
You've reached Daria. I'm not at the phone right now, so leave a message after the tone and I'll get back to you when I can. Hey Daria, it's Mac, your loving and long suffering sister. Tell me, oh answering machine, when will your human counterpart answer my call? Call me back. Okay, fine. I guess you won't be calling me back then. I really want to tell you about my day because I just had the most bizarre, isn't the right word, unsettling job interview. The building itself was just, man, something about it was deeply not right. You know, Daria, being a CCTV operator is a lot more than watching cameras all night. It is also feeling weird talking to your coworkers who you are watching all night for pay. Uh, <laughs> but I'd rather be doing the watching than being watched, right? There's someone following me. I, I, I don't know. He, he's been showing up places my my class, my glass studio, I don't, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> I don't, uh, something is wrong. Something's off. I, I don't know. Disclaimer, nothing is what it seems, not even the sound. Before the Tone is a psychological horror science fiction podcast produced by Nave of Hearts. We follow Mac as she begins to work at the increasingly suspicious Atlas Consulting. But be warned, we may not be the only ones following. This trailer has featured the voices of Anna Stein as Mac, Emma Johanna Puranen as Daria, and Rebecca Hansen in the credits. The music was made by Duck Edwards. The sound design and dialogue editing were done by Catherine Seaton. It was written and directed by Anna Stein. Thank you for listening. For updates and ominous messaging, find us on Twitter and Tumblr at Knave of Hearts AD.